questions. We have about an hour of um, for the presentation, and we want to get you um, have it be a good, clean hour, and that's it. And if it's a little bit less, fine. And if there's need time for afterwards, I'm happy to take questions from anyone and have them sent to me, and then I'll send them on, send them on to Troy and Ken. So you don't want oral well, I want to just make sure. Interaction. How would you like it? I, I would like to keep it an hour so that um, it was just a question. Time. I wasn't debating. Yeah. Well, if it can be within the hour, or it's fine. It's just a question. Okay. <coughs> We've developed this to be about a 40, 45 minute presentation, so there should be a bit of time for some questions, and then if there are bigger, more complex questions. Well, when you hear Gretchen, I'm afraid to ask questions. Look stupid, so <laughs> quiet. Okay. Me too, Troy. There we go. She can make me. Right now we're having. I'm a nice guy. Right now we're having technical All the time. difficulties. So I didn't say anything. Okay. Anyone Proceed. would like to break in a song and dance to entertain oh, yeah. us while we're That was your pain, The dog and pony show. Could you go ahead and start? David. Feel free to Not proceed yet. with us. Okay, Talking how about how about we move on? Are we ready? Yep. We'll move yes. on. Yes. Okay, we're ready. Go ahead. All right, uh, once the PowerPoint will be up and running, and this microphone is for the TV audience. Um, so we'd like to welcome everybody to the social studies curriculum for our grades K through 12. My name is Troy Henninger. I was the facilitator for the group. It was my honor to work with a wonderful group of folks that are seated to my left and the one particular gentleman to my right, and also a cast at uh, Pond Cove Middle School and High School who worked outside of this group since the spring or summer of 2008. So we are very grateful to have had so many contributors. Um, Aaron, next page, buddy. Excellent. Um, Next one. And that would be the contributors at Pond Cove, the middle school and the high school. And I'll start with Pond Cove as uh, Linda Paul, Deb Sampson, Linda Sigmund, Ann Valente, Mary Jane Ham, and Christine Tweedy. At the middle school, Joseph Doan, Kate Carlonis, Tabitha Eastman. At the high school, Dwight Ely, Ted Jordan, Mary Page, Mark Ash, Melissa Oliver, and Sarah Harrington. How are we going to take you through a walk through social studies this evening? We're going to start out with a scope and sequence and some program highlights. We'll start with Pond Cove, move to the middle school, finish with the high school. Then we'll come back and briefly uh, touch on a couple of pieces of the report, which are some short-term actions that are currently going on and some long-term considerations. And then we'll conclude with a brief question and answer. And if there are some lengthier, in-depth questions that cannot be answered in a very crisp manner, They'll send those along to me. Okay, we're going to start with Pond Cove and Marianne Harrington, who will highlight. Uh, and what you'll find on the PowerPoint is just some uh, very brief skeleton pieces of the presentation. The depth will come from the presenters because they have all of the knowledge. Marianne? K through four curriculum uh, begins. One of the things that we focus on is the skills that you need for your whole life, actually. Um, but we're beginning. We really begin and focus on um, interactive personal skills. We focus on the research skills. We focus on literacy and comprehension, and um, study skills and critical thinking. With with those skills, then we. We teach those skills through the content area. Um, the content area begins in kindergarten, and it's a half day, very packed, very crammed with activity. And um, what they they begin, some of they're a blank slate. The kids come in; some of them haven't even had nursery school yet. So we they are teaching them very basic interaction, interactive skills, very basic class rules, class expectations. And they do this through a program called Responsive Classroom. It's predictable. It's fun. It, um, it, it also carries on through the rest of the curriculum. Through You can use Responsive Classroom 
all the way through K-4, even into middle school, if, they, if you choose to. So it, there's a, a thread that continues. Um, the other, one of the other focuses they have in um, kindergarten is they use Scholastic News to highlight um, historical figures and the special holidays, particularly national holidays, um, and that's, that's about all they can squeeze into their day uh, in kindergarten. So <laughs> they're very busy. Um, in first grade, that's when it really starts. The curriculum begins with communities. They learn, they, they start the year again with focusing on the classroom and the classroom community and the expectations of the children within the classroom. And then it, they move on to the Cape Elizabeth community and the components of what a community needs. And then they move on to the economics of the community and they identify goods and services. And um, they, in, they, end the year, or no, it's not, they, they <coughs> begin, they, they have a, a part where they go to um, a field trip with, to the apple orchard, and they enjoy the good, they learn about the goods and services through hands-on activities through the apple orchard. So. Um, then second grade, we can kind of step out and give them a more global awareness. We, we call it around the world. Um, and we focus on where they are in the world. And we're, as Cape Elizabeth, we do an activity where we start where they're, it's they're themselves, and then Cape Elizabeth is inside Maine, which is inside the United States, which is inside the continent of North America, which is inside the world. So we really try to give them an idea of where they are in the world. And then we broaden that to different communities and do a comparison of communities of the United States community versus, um, we also study Kenya, we study China, we study Brazil, and then focus, we do a focus on the rainforest with Brazil. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. We do a lot of hands-on activities and creative activities. We t focus on traditions of different countries, the topography, the climate, and show them how diverse the world is and try to really teach them an appreciation for the diversity of the world. Uh, in third grade, they get an introduction to the first historical inquiry where they're actually looking at the artifacts. Their, their content is the history of Portland or the greater Portland area. And it's an amazing year because they get to use Portland as their their artifact itself. They go on these wonderful field trips where they can um, see the, the cemetery and they see the observatory. And they look at like primary sources, they look at, um, they really begin to look at the multiple forms of information and do comparisons of today and what it was like in the co colonial days. They, um, and they begin to really develop, a, a, to look at the world in a different perspective. And then we move on to fourth grade, where it's a, a traditional, um, a tr a sort of a tradition to teach main studies in fourth grade. Most, most of the communities in the state do that. And um, they begin with early history, um, prehistorical <laughs> Maine, and then they move on to um, Native Americans and the early explorers, they study the geography and topography of Maine. Then they move on to the government, and they move on even to economics, industry, and um, really looking at Maine in depth so they know where they come from. So we kind of start small and kind of build up to the world. And then in third grade, we bring it down to focus more on the history of things and where how these communities actually developed and why they're developing. And, um, and then they move on into middle school and begin real history. Well, not real history, history. I think I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very <laughs> oh, no, I'm done. <laughs> Program of motion. Um, one, the, some of the things, it's the strengths of our program and looking at what we're truly trying to work on to um, 
one of the things we're really trying to work on is focus on literacy through our social studies program. And we're trying to teach them how to read nonfiction texts, how to read the different types of texts. And um, one of the things that we're learn where we have uh, invested in is what we call a comprehension toolkit, which is a, a curriculum, a program that teaches children how to read these dense, informative texts. And how to, it's totally different than going about reading a regular nonfiction storybook. So one of the things that we've learned is that some of the kids that will get to high school and don't actually don't know how to read a textbook. So we're focusing on that in third and fourth grade, and then they're also working on it in the middle school. Um, another thing that we're really trying to do is, with the literacy program, we're trying to make sure that all our we're giving, we're getting the kids to have the information, but at their reading level. It's really important right now to make sure that kids are reading all the time. It's just, we have to completely focus on that. And so what we're trying to do is have level text for all reading levels, so that no matter what the information is, every child can be able to access that information at their level. Um, so we're trying to make sure that we have the materials and that we have the strategies to teach the children how to use this type of information. Um, one of the things that we really like about our program is that we um, try to show the children a broader global view. It's like Cape Elizabeth is a wonderful community, but there's more to it, the world than just Cape. And we're trying to make sure that they they understand what's out there and how, um, like, um, one of the things that's really interesting, like, they don't understand the difference, like, in second grade, they don't understand the difference between um, the hemispheres, like, down, down under we study Australia, and they don't understand at first that the climate is opposite of, the, of our climate. And so it's really important to, like, we check temperature online and we check, oh, in Melbourne it's, it's hot today but it's really cold here because they're having summer. So we're trying to give them a, a much broader view of what's going on in the world. Um, and um, we also are focused on trying to integrate social studies. Our day is short. We have a very compact day of math and literacy and science and social studies. and so we try very hard to integrate a lot of our subjects, making sure that we're doing reading, um, focusing on reading during social studies, doing research, which is such an important skill, to um, <coughs> during these subject areas. Like one of the things in second grade that we do, we study Brazil as a country, but we also study the rainforest at the same time. So we're doing a lot of integration, a lot of mixing up the information. Um, and at our level, they're just little, they're seven, they're five, you know. We do a lot of product base. We're not, there's not a lot of tests. They, they shouldn't be having tests in science and social studies at that age. So we do a lot of hands-on activities um, in, and field trips, like the whole third grade field trip, going into Portland and experiencing it. It's like a living museum. So. Uh, it helps kids become much more interested, and they end up loving history just by experiencing the the field trips and things like that. So I think I'm done now. <laughs> you hope, right? <laughs> we could plug the concert right now. What? We could the plug the concert. rainforest concert. Oh, I should. Yeah, I actually have a couple samples of work that yes. you guys want to see. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I will. Okay, so middle school social studies. Um, for years, essentially between fifth and eighth grade, the middle school experience saw three years of U.S. history and one year of world.